5.1.4 protocols. What is protocol? A protocol is a set of rules that help computers communicate with each other in a network. Protocol ensures information is sent and received correctly between computers making communication smooth. Protocol help check for the errors in data transmission and correct them if needed so the information arrives safely. Examples of protocols include HTTP and FTP and for IGCSE syllabus you only need to learn two protocols. First one is HTTP and second one is HTTPS. What is a protocol? Option A, a type of computer hardware. Option B, a software for error detection. Option C, a data storage method. Option D, a set of rules for network communication. So the correct answer is option D. Uh, a protocol is a set of rules for network communication. Well, now let's discuss the first type of protocol, which is HTTP. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It allows the transfer of web pages, images, and other content between a web server and a browser. Uh, HTTP does not protect your data, meaning the hacker can see what you sent, like passwords or personal information. What does HTTP stand for? Option A, Hyperlink Text Transfer Protocol. Option B, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Option C, Hyper Transmission Text Protocol. Option D, Hyper Transfer Text Protocol. So the correct answer is option B. HTTP stands for Hyper Text Transfer Protocol. What risk is associated with HTTP? Option A, file might not load correctly. Option B, it can only transfer text files. Option C, it requires special software to operate. Option D, hacker can see what you sent. So the correct answer is option D. Hacker can see what you send because HTTP does not encrypt the data. Let's understand the HTTP web page retrieval process and how your browser brings a website to life. The so user enters the URL into the browser's address bar. The web browser sends the URL to a DNS server to resolve the domain name into an IP address. The web browser uses hypertext transfer protocol to send a request to the web server for the web page. The web browser responds by sending back the data for the website including HTML, CSS or active scripts using HTTP. The web browser then renders the HTML, applies the CSS styles and executes the active scripts to display the web page. Okay, so now let's understand the HTTP web page retrieval process using this illustration. So first of all, the user enters the URL into the web browser's address bar. The web browsers then reach out a DNS server to match a, a domain name to an IP address. The DNS server has a database of IP addresses and domain names, so it look up the domain name in its system. If it finds the domain name, it sends the matching IP address back to the web browser. Using this IP address, the browser then sends a request to a web server asking for the web page. Once the web server receives the request, it sends the page data back to the web browser. Finally, the browser processes the data and displays the web page for the user. The web browser uses FTP protocol to request the web page from the server. So this statement is false. Okay, so now let's discuss about the HTTPS or Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. HTTPS is a secure protocol for requesting web pages. It adds encryption to protect data during the transfer. Websites get security certificates from a trustworthy source called the Certificate Authority. Certificate Authority verifies a website authenticity and issue a digital certificate if they are trustworthy. What is HTTPS primarily used for? Option A, encrypted communication. Option B, compressing data for faster transfer. Option C, speeding up the loading time for web pages. Option D, blocking advertisement on websites. So the correct answer is option A, encrypted communication. Well, now let's understand the HTTPS web page retrieval process. Before requesting web pages, the web browser asks the server for its digital certificate. The web server provides a copy of its digital certificate. The browser checks the certificate's authenticity. 
if authentic, encrypted communication proceeds between the browser and server. If not authentic, the browser flags the website as insecure. Now let's take a look at HTTPS web page retrieval process with the help of this illustration. So first of all, user enters the URL into the browser's address bar. Browser contacts the DNS server to get the IP address for the domain. The, the DNS server finds the domain and sends back the IP address. Browser uses the IP address to request web server's digital certificate. Server sends the certificate and browser check its authenticity. If valid, the browser requests the web page using HTTPS. Server sends back the web page via HTTPS. Browser renders and displays the web page to, for the user. In HTTPS, what does the browser request from the server before asking for the web pages? Option A, the server's IP address. Option B, the server's digital certificate. Option C, the server's domain name. Option D, the server's encryption key. So the correct answer is option B, the server's digital certificate. Now let's discuss the features of HTTPS protocol. HTTPS is an advanced version of HTTP protocol that keeps our data secure and private while browsing the web. HTTPS uses secure socket layer, SSL or transport layer security TLS protocols for encrypted communication. HTTPS helps verify that the website you are visiting is real not a fake one trying to steal your information. Websites using HTTPS show a padlock in the browser signaling that the connection is secure. HTTPS is an advanced version of HTTP that ensures data privacy while browsing the web. So this statement is true. Secure websites use HTTPS protocol and you can verify if a website is secure or not by following two indicators. So the first indicator is the prefix HTTPS at the start of the URL. Second indicator is a padlock icon before the URL. And you can also verify the, the website's digital certificate by clicking on the padlock icon in the browser's address bar. What protocol do secure websites use? Option A, HTTPS. Option B, HTTP. Option C, FTP. Option D, TCP. So the correct answer is option A, HTTPS. Which of the following can indicate that a website is secure? Option A, the prefix FTP in the URL. Option B, a www prefix in the URL. Option C, an aesthetic symbol at the end of the URL. Option D, the prefix HTTPS in the URL. So the correct answer is option D, the prefix HTTPS in the URL. What small icon appears before the URL on secure websites? Option A, a question mark. Option B, a padlock icon. Option C, a star icon. Option D, a green arrow. So the correct answer is option B, a padlock icon. Well, now let's compare the HTTP and HTTPS protocol. HTTP is a protocol for transferring data over the web without encryption, while HTTPS is a secure version of HTTP that encrypts the data to protect it during the transfer. In HTTP, data is transferred in plain text, meaning it's not encrypted, while in HTTPS, data is encrypted using SSL and TLS. In HTTP, data is not encrypted. Anyone intercepting the data can read it. In HTTPS, data is encrypted, so only the intended recipient can understand it. Browsers may mark HTTP website as not secure, while the websites using the HTTPS are more trusted by the browsers and often indicated by a padlock symbol in the URL bar. 5.2.1 The Purpose of a Web Browser a web browser is a type of application software that allows users to access information on the World Wide Web. A browser requests the necessary HTML files and data from the web server, render them, and display the content to the user. Remember to not confuse between the web browsers and search engines. Google Chrome is a web browser while Google is a search engine. Which of the following is an example of a web browser? Option A, Google. Option B, Yahoo. Option C, Google Chrome. Option D, Bing. So the correct answer is option C, Google Chrome. 
Web browsers create websites and host them on the servers. So that statement is false. Okay, so now let's discuss the key features of a web browser. The first feature is called address bar. This feature allows the user to type in a specific URL to access a web page. Next feature is called the user history. This feature keeps a record of all visited web pages. Next feature is called bookmarks and favorites. This feature lets the users to save specific web pages for a quicker access in the future. So the next feature is multi-tab functionality. So this feature enables the users to open multiple web pages in one window for easier navigation. Next feature is navigation buttons. So common buttons include forward, back, and reload or home, etc. Next feature is cookies management. So this feature allows the browsers to store and manage the cookies which contain the specific data about the user. The address bar in a web browser is used to type a URL to access a specific web page. This statement is true. Multi-tab functionality allows users to open multiple web pages in different windows. So this statement is false. Favorite feature in a browser allow users to save web pages for quicker access in the future. So this statement is true. Here is a summary of web browser's features we have already discussed along with some new ones. So first we have address bar, then we have HTML rendering, then we have navigation tools, downloading files, storing cookies, storing bookmarks, storing passwords, and the last feature is recording history.